Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, this is the video about my completed um, WPL B14 KM truck. And this follows on from the WPL Love or Hate video that I did, asked for lots of comments. I got lots of comments and that's great. So please check it out if you haven't seen it because it talks a lot about WPL and it's, it's, it's stirred up a lot of stuff, which is brilliant. And I wanna show you the best thing about this two-speed gearbox and this truck is just incredible and I cannot believe it. So I'm gonna show you that first. Uh, but before I do, um, I'm just gonna go on to say that this video is mainly gonna be about this truck, what I've done to it, and all the stuff that's in the background and uh, you know, show you around it basically and why it's been very important for me and, and, and why I'm starting to love it. So without further ado, let's look at what this thing can do best. And it was the biggest surprise to Andrew and I. Uh, excuse the props, but the hand does uh, better than anything, I think, for this type of thing. So we're in crawler gear. Look at how smooth she is. It's just incredible. I cannot get over. I mean, sure that's in crawler gear, but some of my big, oh, I would almost go as far as to say as we're getting on for XE, Hobby Ring XE run territory here. Into That's in my MC. It's just, the smoothness is incredible and I cannot believe it. Now this is running a Hobby Wing 1060 ESC and I've got my tactic radio in it which came out of my um, Armour Creighton 6S because it's spare lying around. And I, yeah, I mean, if you put it in uh, first gear, second gear, I don't know what you call it, but the non-crawler gear, it's a little bit more jumpy as you would expect. But I mean, wow, even then, it's just, it's unreal. I, I, I did not, it's the biggest surprise and it's made me love this truck and I cannot wait to get it out on the trail. This video is coming, I want you to do this video before I either break it or get it muddy. Because I'm very proud of this truck. So again, we'll put it in crawler gear. It's just amazing. Absolutely amazing, that two-speed gearbox is just superb. So I can recommend running a, uh, if you can get it in, it's a bit of a faff, uh, a Hobby Wing 1060. It does go in. Now I'm gonna show you all the important bits for me about this truck and what I've done. So a quick jump cut and I'll be So, what have I done to this? Well, lots of weathering. This is the standard shell. Let me move that over a little bit. So. That's what it looked like originally. So there's quite a big difference. And I am very, very proud of this. This is my first proper weathering um, attempt or, or you know, doing it seriously. And I'm really pleased with the outcome. I, I really am. And especially, my, I think my biggest achievement is this dent here. Now, I was really annoyed at this truck. I was just, I had a night, bit of a nightmare building it and I got a bit angry with it. So I, I first of all, I sanded it with some um, 2000 grade sandpaper everywhere, all over the body, just to kind of smooth it off and take the sheen off. And then I went to make some dents. So I got my the barrel of my soldering iron and I went to town and I absolutely, I mean, this really hard plastic, especially the wheel arches. And I, it took me a long time to burn that in and it looked a bit rubbish, I have to say. I also did that bit on the bonnet and this other bit on the bonnet as well. And I just trial and error really. So I wanted to sand them down and that didn't really work. So I, I, I got, I admit, I got the Dremel out again in anger, but I put a very soft sanding wheel on it and just took it off the edge off so it didn't look like a burn. It looks a little bit like a burn, I suppose, when you get up close. And then I went to town weathering it and uh, I, you know, that's always come from Andrew and I decided to invest in some nice brushes and some really cool paints, all different types. Um, let's have a look. We've got quite a few here. 
so I thought I'd go to town. I saw, I just happened to see this on a weathering, uh, weathering video, AK Paints, and I thought I'd try some because it seemed like magic. It's not magic, obviously, but it, it's helped me. So we've got rust streaks, dark streaking grime, winter streaking grime, wash light rust, and then an enamel wash for DAC vehicles, and then dust and dirt deposits. This one is probably, these two actually, the rust streaks and the dust deposits. Get your thumb out of the way. They are superb. So I have used all of these paints on this truck in various locations. It's taken me quite a while to do this, but I've been very patient and I think, you know, I'm really happy with the outcome. I think Andrew's quite proud of me as well. And I think he probably thinks it's a bit much, but I quite like that kind of style. Um, and again, it's my first attempt. So I've just gone on over it in different areas, really, the different colors, just looking at pictures, wanting to make it look properly beaten up. And I think I've succeeded, really. I've got some LED lights coming. That's the last thing to be added. Um, but the dust effects, I mean, a good example of that is on the back here. And that dust paint is just, you put it on and it just dries like that. It, it really is just superb. It's what I like about these AK paints and Andrew had a point really, like the, the light rust wash, it really is just watered down enamel paint. So it's a bit of a cheat really. And you could do that yourself with white spirit, but it helps me being a beginner, these washes that I've got, because you can, you can put them on and they're so easy to apply and they, they look pretty much how they're going to end up when you put them on, as I found. And you can just take it off with a rag and some white spirit or brush and white spirit. I found it so much easier as a beginner using those washes and they're not that expensive. They come from Europe. Um, I bought them direct and I am really pleased with how it's come out. I think it, it, it looks good. Um, it's the odd bit here and there which look too brush marky, I think. But again, this is my first proper attempt. And it, I was comfortable and confident with this because I didn't care at the time I was doing it. And I've then, then grown to love it as it's come out like this. Uh, other things I did which I quite liked was I put some enamel grey on here to look like um, it had been like primed, you know, as it had been hit. And it didn't work. So I just sanded a bit of it off and I've left some of it. Just, and that's what I, I'd be too scared to do that on an expensive cross truck. But the, this has is, is, is got me hooked. I am absolutely hooked, uh, I must admit. I, so I'm, I've got something else coming in terms of uh, WP, which I'll talk about in a moment. But yes, yeah, so I've also got some characters in there which did fit really, really well. Some army dudes. They were five quid for a pack of 10, I think, off, e off, the, off Amazon. They arrived within a day, good old Amazon Prime. Um, you'll notice here that there's a flatbed, a wooden flatbed. This is balsa wood that's been weathered. Um, I don't like, and I Andrew really got me onto that, and I completely understand what he means. The, I, I just don't quite like the, 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 the um, flatbed that sticks on it. You know, the proper, what do you call it? <laughs> flatbed with the sides on it, the plastic one that goes on the back. Um, the load bed and I thought this would look pretty cool so I just come up with it and designed it my battery sitting under here um, to, to obviously I couldn't I couldn't it's just a very limited space in here so I needed to use that for uh, the battery so this, I'll probably put a tire on here or something like that I've also weathered underneath axles or the links which I'm really happy with. You know, they look pretty cool, I think. Um, again, for my first time, I'm over the moon with it. And I've fallen in love with this truck, I really have. And I'm hoping it doesn't break. I really am. Because I think, um, well, it's turned out better than I could ever have imagined it going to. Uh, just quickly, I will open the bonnet. And you can see in here, we've got the 1060 and the Tactic Radio. Now, what I've done to get those in, there are supporting posts underneath here um, that sit above the servo that this plastic tray sits in. So if you take the body off, the plastic tray bolts to the top of the chassis. I just cut the supports down because there was wasted space underneath there. I just lowered everything down 
and it meant that I could get my spare ESC and my radio gear in and it fits. So that was a bit of a pain, but it works well. One thing I will say is that run that RC, uh, he commented um, on the Lovell Hates WPL, WPL video and quite rightly said and noted um, that I had installed the gearbox the way around. Uh, in that video, you can see the motor was pointing that way. Now, I tried it both ways. Now, the right way around is this way, and he's quite right about that. But I had a problem. I don't know whether it was my kit or what, but the cutout on the underside of the uh, interior uh, wasn't big enough. So it was pushing the interior up, and I wanted people in the interior. So I had the decision of either cutting away the bottom of the interior, which I didn't really fancy doing, or um, having the motor the other way round and having to cut away this little bit here of the cab, just the bit you see in here. So it would sit down properly. So I understand from other videos that with the motor and the gearbox that way round, their interiors are fit fine. So there's something going on here. I did fit it in as it was, um, as it's supposed to be and it didn't fit. But anyway, I've trimmed the interior, the, the, the middle part, just shaved a bit off and it now fits fine. Um, bit of WPL quality control, I think. Uh, but apart from that, I need to glue these mirrors so they stay shut. I am over the moon and I cannot wait to run it. Uh, I really hope it doesn't break. So to add on to that, what I'm going to do or what I have done in my love or hate WPL, I you saw that, which was my focus, which was my ready to run URL. And you can see there's a tire missing. I've got that somewhere. I have decided because I am so pleased with this to I've bought today the upgrade kit for that. I'm not going to run it with the command cab on, I don't think, because it makes it quite bobbly and I don't like that. Uh, but for now, I'm going to make another flatbed for this. So the ESC and everything else will probably go on the flatbed. It's a, as it's a six by six, it's a, a much bigger um, chassis area to put something on. So that is going to be weathered as well, not as excessively as this so it's going to be a different weathering project um a lot more subtle a lot cleaner um it's going to be excellent and i'm i gave i had a ready to run i forgot um the six by six version of this the b16 and i gave it to andrew because i was so fed up with it so he's got that so i'm pushing him to get the metal upgrade kit so we can run the ural and the hc6 or the b 16 sorry i can't get used to i'm so used to cross names um so yes we are hoping i'm going to push him to have an army of wpl trucks running around so we've got a, you know a fairly good selection because he's got the gaz version wpl as well uh, and i've got this so i think it should be pretty damn cool so i'm going to run this shortly and uh, yeah please check out the video Thank you for all of your comments on the, you know, so far. Um, please keep them coming. Any comments on, you know, I'd like your views on this weathering. Do you think it's awful? Do you think it's good, bad? Do you like it? What do you like? What don't you like? What have you done? Share your experiences. And uh, yeah, please keep them coming. Thanks for your support. And uh, please like and subscribe and we'll catch up very soon. Take care. Bye for now.